One day in class I was bored, so I started drawing cubes, which made me think of Rubik's cubes and how I've never been able to solve one. And I thought about how the only cubes I've ever seen are 3x3x3, three by three by three, and how there must be cubes that are 2x2x2, two by two by two, or even 4x4x4. Four by four by four. But I wouldn't be able to solve those unless I knew how to do a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. My curiosity grew to the point where I just had to go find a cube and figure out how to solve it. We started to seek help from our peers. Do you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? Doesn't every math major know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? <laughs> uh. And the exploration began. <laughs> After days of devotion to the cube, we finally solved it. Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my In order to understand how to solve the cube, we needed to define the rotations. Up, up inverse. Right, right inverse. Left, left inverse. Bottom, bottom inverse. Front, front inverse. Back, back inverse. The algorithms that we found were cyclical in nature, meaning that if we performed a right, we would also perform a right inverse within the algorithm. The algorithms are designed to move only one cube while not disturbing the already solved cubes and faces. We define the center as C sub x, where x is the color of that face, in this case, C sub white. We define the middle pieces as m sub x, y, where x and y are the two adjacent colors. An example of this would be m sub white green. And lastly, we define the corners as k sub x, y, and z, where x, y, and z are the adjacent colors. An example of this would be k sub red, white, and blue. Before we begin, the process of solving the cube involves many different algorithms that we discovered through trial and error, help from our peers, and noticing how different rotations affected the positioning of different cubes. Through much practice, we were able to notice how certain cubes were positioned within the solving process, allowing us to solve it faster than by purely doing the algorithms over and over. The center square never moves. For this reason, it forms the basis of what color each face should be. We define this as C sub x, where x is the color of the center square. To start off, we chose the white face as the top face. The first step in solving was getting the cross. To get the cross, we noticed that getting all of the white m sub 2s on the bottom face aligned with their corresponding c sub x's on their adjacent faces, and then rotating them up to the top face would give us the cross. The next step in solving the top face is getting the k sub x, y, z's in their corresponding corners. To do so, we put them on the bottom under their adjacent side colors, and using a simple four-step algorithm, we moved it into the top face oriented in the correct position. Once you solve the first face, the squares on the first layer of the adjacent faces will also all be solved. The next step is to solve the middle layer. This can be done using either of two algorithms. Here, the red and green cube needs to be rotated to the left. Now we have solved the middle layer. The next step is to form a cross on the top face. At this point, you can have one of four positions. C sub x, a small backwards L, a horizontal line, or the cross. If you start with the backwards L on the top face and you do the algorithm once, you will get the horizontal line. Do the algorithm one more time and you will get the cross. When you solve the top cross, the m sub x y cubes may not line up with the adjacent faces. Line up two of the m sub x y cubes with the adjacent faces. Hold it so that one of the m sub x y cubes is on the back face and one is on the right. Use this simple algorithm. This will line up all the m sub 2 cubes to the adjacent faces. The next step in solving the top layer is positioning all of the k sub x y z's into their correct corners next to their adjacent colors. In this case, k sub yellow, blue, red is not in the right place. 
Using this algorithm, the k sub x, y, z should go to the correct positions. However, you may need to do it a second time for this to work. Now that the k sub x, y, z's are in their correct position, we need to orient them in the right direction to complete the cube. We use the same four step algorithm as before to solve the corners for the first layer. After completing the corner, rotate only the top face counterclockwise to complete the other corners. As we said before, the algorithms are cyclical in nature, meaning that if you do the same rotations over and over, your cube will eventually go to the original state. After finally solving the cube, we explored patterns that can be formed on the faces using different algorithms. One of the simpler patterns we explored was making the cube look like a checkerboard on each face. To get this pattern, we used this algorithm and repeated it twice on each face. The green face on top and the white face on the front and the orange to the right follow the on-screen algorithm to reach the bullseye pattern. Do the algorithm a second time will result in a bullseye pattern of different colors. A third time through the same algorithm will result in a solved cube. We call this cyclic to the third degree. I like that one. Starting the same way as the bullseye pattern, doing the on-screen algorithm will result in the zigzag pattern. This pattern follows a cycle of degree two, meaning that two times through the algorithm will result back into the solved cube. The last cyclic pattern we found was the stripes pattern. Starting the same as before and following the on-screen algorithm, you will get these stripes. Just as the zigzag pattern, the stripes pattern is cyclic to the second degree, so two times through the algorithm will result back in the solved cube. One of the more interesting patterns we found was the cube in a cube in a cube. The white face on top, blue on the right, and red on the front follow this algorithm to find something interesting. We discovered that cubes with pictures on the faces instead of solid colors can be solved using the same algorithms as the regular cube. This cube has the squares in all the right spots, but not facing the right direction, as you can see in some of the centers. This was confusing at first, but when we focused on the centers of all the surrounding faces, we were able to solve it. Next, we looked at a 4x4x4 four 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 cube. The main difference is that this cube has no C sub x. I created a C sub x by solving the inner four squares. I also created the M sub x, y cubes by matching two side edges. From this point on, a strategy that we used in solving the 4x4x4 cube is solving it in the same manner as the 3x3x3 cube, with few exceptions.